like I'm back at home. I just didn't want all that B-roll to go to waste. Hi, I'm Jarvis and welcome to Tech Tuesday. I say that like it's a series, but I, I don't know, should it be? Let me know in the comments if we should make this a regular thing. So I'm finally back home in my apartment. The last couple of weeks have just had a lot going on. I was in LA and then Dallas for my birthday and uh, made a video about that. And then I was in Cleveland, Ohio for PyCon, which is a conference for the Python programming language. I know, I know. How do I do it? How am I, how am I so cool? Today we're talking about learning how to code. I've worked in Silicon Valley as a software engineer for about five years now. And I'm really excited to talk about this because I get asked this question a lot. Like almost as much as um, people tell me I should get braces or that I look like the rapper Kyle. Anyway, how do you start and what's the best language to pick? When I first learned about programming, I wanted to try it immediately, but I didn't know where to start because there's tons of resources online and they're all giving conflicting advice. Though, I suppose I'm making that worse now. Anyway, I ended up trying and failing to program like three separate times in high school. First, in my sophomore year, my buddy Russell and I tried to learn C++ out of like an old dusty book didn't make it past the first chapter. Honestly, that experience made it seem so hard that I wouldn't try to pick it up again until my senior year of high school when the same friend showed me that you could write little programs on your TI calculators. These guys. And that, and that worked, I, I guess, depending on your definition of work, because all I learned to do was write very simple programs like math equations and um, a Yo Mama joke generator. Yo mama's so old, she's well respected in her community and has an unprecedented wisdom and frankly you're lucky to have such an awesome lady in your life. But learning my calculator's programming language wasn't exactly a transferable skill. I remember not paying attention in my history class and trying to read Java documentation and then that that's a very nerdy sentence. And then getting really confused because they would try to explain these really complicated programming concepts that weren't even relevant to somebody who was just getting started. Somewhat surprisingly, actually, I ended up going to college for computer science and have since learned a ton of programming languages like Java, Python, C, C++, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, C Sharp. You know, and all of those I've used in some context professionally and I've learned a bunch of other programming languages just to play around with. I also taught Java in a couple of classes as a teaching assistant in college and so I I think I have a lot more context now about learning to code. So what programming language is the best to start with? It depends. Boo! Come on, man, everybody says that. Do you have like a specific thing you wanna make? Yeah, man, websites. I wanna make, I wanna make the next YouTube over here. So websites these days are- Also, this call and response trope is very meta and, and kind of cheesy. All right. So websites these days are made up of three primary components, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You've probably heard of those before. Each of them has their own specialized role and you pretty much need to know all of them to make websites, but they all complement each other. So it shouldn't feel too overwhelming while you're learning. There's a ton of online resources for this, like uh, Udacity, Udemy, Code Academy, Books by O'Reilly. Those are the books with like the animals on the cover. All great places to start, but I think the most effective thing you can do is just find a tutorial that looks interesting, do that, get your feet wet, and then try to start making whatever you're gonna make, and then refer back to those resources whenever you get stuck. I think a big barrier that people put up for themselves is they need to complete a course or complete a book before they start programming, but really you should be making stuff with whatever tools you have available as soon as you possibly can. I think that's the way to learn the fastest. All right, so if I learn those, can I make the next YouTube? Almost. Um, so YouTube is what's called a web application. So HTML, JavaScript, and CSS make up the front end of YouTube, like all the interactions and stuff that you see, the visual components. But in order to store like user accounts and preferences and streaming video, YouTube has to have what's called a backend, which is essentially a program that runs on a Google computer in a data center somewhere in like Virginia or Atlanta or something, and does the complex calculations and stores all of your user data and stores all of the videos, for example, for streaming. And that backend is responsible for computing a custom variation of YouTube YouTube for each user that requests it. For example, that's why I can go to youtube.com and you can go to youtube.com and we would have separate experiences. And it's also why you can log into your YouTube account from basically anywhere in the world and still have the same experience. All right, so what programming languages are used on the back end? I, I thought you, 
Actually, pretty much anything can be used on the back end. Some popular examples, though, are JavaScript, which can be used on the front end or the back end, Python, Java, Go, uh, PHP. Hey, PHP, my friend told me Facebook uses PHP. Should I use PHP so I could be like the next Facebook? No, no. Yo, is this how mobile apps work too? Hey, good. Good question. See, this isn't so bad. So Android apps are written in Java and Kotlin and iOS apps are written in Objective-C or Swift. So, oh, um, how about desktop apps like iTunes? That specific application is probably written in Objective-C, but you can write desktop apps in pretty much anything. Man, why are there so many languages? Yeah, so there are a lot of programming languages and that can be really intimidating because each of them has their slight pros and cons and differences. But if you've made it this far and don't know what you wanna make or what you wanna start with, I recommend Python. It's very, very beginner friendly. The code reads a lot like English and the language itself is very robust. My very first programming class was taught in Python and I've used it professionally at Google and Yelp and Patreon where I am now. It's used all over the industry. In fact, YouTube's backend is actually written in Python. Python is going to make it easy for you to learn the most fundamental concepts in programming without getting you bogged down in syntax and implementation details like something like Java would. It has a ton of beginner-friendly resources and it's gonna make it easier for you to pick up any new languages as you need to. Finally, the community for Python is amazing, hence why I went to a conference for it. I'm bored. JavaScript is a close second, especially if you know you wanna work on the web, but the language itself has a large surface area and it can be pretty unintuitive at times for beginners. The newest version of JavaScript, ES6, attempts to address a lot of these problems, but you will never regret learning Python. Trust me on that. In fact, if someone tells you something other than Python or JavaScript or Ruby or a language for building a mobile app, for example, like Java or Objective-C, be very skeptical of them. A lot of people like to put down higher level languages like Python in favor of compiled languages like C++ or whatever. And those people are the reason that a lot of newcomers think programming isn't for them. So, so f them. You do you, uh, don't listen to the haters, dab on them. That's all for today and good luck in your programming journey. I'll link some resources down below. If you like this video, please uh, uh, falcon punch that like button and subscribe. Maybe hit the bell if you don't want YouTube to forget to notify you about new content. And let me know in the comments if I should make more stuff like this. Like maybe I could actually make a Tech Tuesday series or something, I don't know. Anyway, see you next time. Are you gonna unlock the door?